Welcome to Rock Counting Family Adventures. Come follow my family as we trek across the country collecting crystals, fossils, and minerals. We'll learn the history of the sites we visit and have a little fun along the way. We hope you enjoyed this episode and join us again soon. On this episode of Rock County Family Adventures, we're headed to Florida to find something truly special. Other than Tampa Bay, agatized coral and fossil shark teeth, Florida doesn't hold a lot for collectors, with the exception of Rex Pit. Rex Pit was a quarry just north of Lake Okeechobee, where very large fossil clams were found. But to get the full picture, we need to rewind our story back to the late Pleistocene epoch, about two million years ago when Florida was underwater. Mercenaria permagma, found in large clam beds in near shore environments, thrived during this time. But a cataclysmic event like a monster tidal wave or super hurricane picked up our clams and dropped them, covering them with many feet of sediment while they were still alive. As time passes, they, they fossilize and geodize with large calcite crystals forming inside. Let's see if we can learn more about how that happened when we get to our destination. My husband, Daniel, son. Sebastian, daughter, Reagan, this is the view we get of Reagan most of the time. Say hello. Hi. Starting off on our adventure to Florida. Eddie Ruck here. He's the owner of uh, of Ruck's Pit, uh, Fort Durham Crystal Mine, and uh, we're going to talk to him a bit about uh, the history of Ruck's Pit and uh, future plans. Ruck's Pit started in the 60s. Yeah, originally 1958. My grandfather uh, uh, moved from Lake Wills, who had a dairy farm, to here, and uh, he bought uh, he bought 1,800 acres.
titanium and iron give it a dark orange that some of them are some of them are almost a white crystal iron the titanium and iron are locked together okay. molecule by molecule there's a superficial sand on top it's called an overburden get through that uh, that's and then get through the Fort Thompson formation Fort Thompson formation is the shale it's a shale sediment that's around three or four hundred thousand years old ice age and then when you get through the Fort Thompson formation, you get into the Nashville formation. That's the, the limestone, the coquina rock, the gray rock. Okay. And uh, I think there's six or seven units uh, to the Nashville formation. So what we're going to be looking at today is, is basically just that area that you, as Rux Pit closed down, you took that stuff off and, and then placed it over here for us to dig through. So this is more of like a tailings pile, very, very family friendly. And uh, that's what we're going to take a look at today. Um, now, how much? How much of this? Close? I have enough, probably, for forty years. So the death of mercenary permagna is, is a bit different than most fossils and clam shells, um, things that we see of that nature. Typically when a clam dies, the muscle relaxes and it allows the shell to open, uh, allowing sediment to move into that cavity to fill it. Uh, it becomes compacted and fossilized over a period of time, but because of the cataclysmic event, whether it be tidal wave or hurricane or uh, what have you, the, the giant waves that, that happened within the ocean in a, uh, an area that was typically very shallow, um, was inundated with sediment and trapped these shells in a life positions. So that they would have added a lot of, uh, of growing material, uh, the material that would be later decomposed by, uh, by a mangrove forest that would have formed above them. The acidic environment would have allowed the, the softer shelled creatures, the, the thin shelled creatures, those that were uh, more spatially near that acidic environment to be eaten, uh, neutralize the acid, move through the ground, um, and hit those hollow voids um, 20, 30, 40 feet deep. Um, and those hollow voids, um, much like a geode, would have allowed crystal growth to happen with inside them. The clams and in some of them the crystal growth um, had stopped. In this one, for instance, you can see where the mud line is. So it was sitting in this position, filled with mud. A hollow pocket was allowed above it, and it filled with crystals. Uh, the mud was able to be removed during a fossil prep, so that leaves us with a little void down here. Um, but you can see the line where the calcium carbonate mixed with the mud and created a, a nasty little rock here, then beautiful crystals in the open pocket above it. Some of the other fossils were in, were in different positions. Um, this one, the hollow pocket would have been up on top, and the shell beneath it has been 
uh, worn away, but the hollow pocket where the, the calcium carbonate formed the crystals and partially replaced the shell, uh, the Argonite shells. One of the first things that, that I use is a little etching. We'll, uh, we'll keep the name covered up, but we use a little etching tool um, to release uh, a lot of these guys that are that are trapped in, uh, in matrix or they're glued together. Um, a lot of these pieces are just going to be too big. This has actually been broken down quite a bit. And uh, when we started seeing crystal, um, then that's when we stopped. And then we'll take off some of these shells that don't, maybe some of the matrix. Uh, I'll let you see that uh, as we get through this. But uh, one of the first tools um, I use are these little, these little etching tools. And uh, we replace the heads on these with um, aluminum nail. You just clip the bottom of the aluminum roofing nail off. You put this in, and then with a, uh, a sharp pair of pliers, uh, you can come back in and, and resharpen this guy as he dolls down. Um, another big tool we use are the, uh, the tile cutters. So it'll allow you to break off bigger pieces of the matrix. It doesn't, doesn't allow you to have a real fine edge on it. But uh, I start off with those things. Right, when we took off that uh, little piece of bridge work there, um, it actually ran a small crack around to the other side, and uh, that piece uh, with just a little flip of a screwdriver actually popped off. So we've washed this back up, and uh, I think that's a great piece from uh, the inside of a piece of matrix that we didn't even know was there. Um, I actually brought that home because we saw a couple of these guys on the outside that looked like they might clean up to be giveaway pieces and uh, haven't washed this one up yet but it does actually look like it's going to be a, a fairly decent giveaway piece um, so we've got a little crystal in here and it's a nearly complete half palm size 